Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm your Water for Kit Guru, and I don't mind telling you I am mildly conflicted. This laptop is the Asus ROG Strix Hero 2 GL504GM. Catchy name, Asus. Uh, but this is a preview, that's why I'm conflicted. It's not a review. Uh, I've been told that this is not necessarily exactly the same spec of laptop that's going to come to the UK in but a few weeks' time. Therefore, running benchmarks and such like can't do it, can't give you the performance figures. As it happens, I have run benchmarks on this laptop and I've compared it to a couple of the laptops that have very similar specs. At the moment, it seems to be performance of the CPU is a tad down. So uh, being told this is an engineering sample, I can believe it. Uh, and that's a shame because sharing graphs is always fun. Uh, so, let, oh, by the way, this, so this Hero 2 uh, has this, I don't know how you describe it really, whatever the, the look is, but it's sort of got a, it's a flat surface, but it, uh, it's got sort of printed on the, uh, uh, on the deck. Uh, there's also a SCAR model which uh, is the same spec of laptop uh, but it looks cosmetically different. Uh, so if you hear about a SCAR 2, boom, anyway, here you go. The anyway. significant uh, combination of features in the Hero 2 is the uh, Core i7-8750H processor, so that's 6 cores, uh, 12 threads because of hyperthreading. It's 2.2 gigahertz base clock, uh, all core boost in other laptops and the boost is dependent on power and cooling. Uh, we've seen 3.4 gigahertz, max boost 4.1 gigahertz, that's typically one or two threads. Uh, uh, so if you're using very lightly threaded workloads, you get that kind of burst of extra speed. Uh, we need to see the actual speed of the actual processor in an actual laptop when it's shipped to us, but for the moment, those numbers are very likely to be correct. 45 watt TDP on that processor. Screen, there are two different screens available, obviously both 15.6 on the uh, diagonal, uh, both full HD 1920 by 1080. This is the slightly more impressive one, which is a 144 hertz IPS level. As to what the technology is, not quite sure. I am going to say the viewing angle is not that great. I'm round here at what I would say is 180, can't see a thing. Come round, come round. I'm round at about 150 degrees and I can see the uh, Republic of Gamers logo going on there. It's not a wide viewing angle. I'm wondering if it's TN. And frankly, TN, a lot of TNs these days, you can go a long way round. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying TN, but I, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, there's also a 60 hertz uh, screen, which is uh, presumably actual IPS rather than IPS level. Graphics GTX 1060, and that's full GTX 10. There's no Max Q type stuff going on there. A full six gigabytes GDDR5 uh, graphics memory. Uh, and judging by the cooling system inside the laptop, this chassis is for GTX 1060. No option of going to 1070 or 1080. It is what it is. Uh, it's the, the processor graphics combo. That's your lot. Memory is up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2666 megahertz, and this has got 32 gigabytes. I suspect that's part of the not necessarily what you're going to get in the production samples because memory costs so much and you don't really need 32 gigabytes in a regular laptop. Uh, so that is one area where frankly this laptop should be going faster than a production version. Um, it's dual channel. I would expect the mainstream to have 16 gig. I'm wondering if there's also going to be an 8 gig single channel cut costs model out there as well. I don't know that. That's just my speculation. Uh, storage, you've got uh, a an M.2 slot and also two and a half inch SATA bay. The uh, M.2 Toshiba 256GB M.2 NVMe uh, and then it's either 128, 256 or 512 gigabyte SSD. This is 256 gigabyte which again suggests a cheaper version could start with 128 and then when it comes to the two and a half inch SATA bay you've got a few options. Uh, this has a Seagate one terabyte Barracuda Pro 7200 RPM regular hard drive. There's also an option on the family of uh, products, a 5400 RPM or an SSHD, so a hybrid hard drive. Uh, again, as to whether all those specs are available in the UK, will be available in the UK, we just don't know at the moment, but uh, they will be out there somewhere. Uh, audio two three and a half watt speakers, uh, they're perfectly okay, frankly, not super loud. They do a reasonable job. They're 
you'll see inside the chassis they're yay sized and nothing nothing special but that rating is a tad higher than normal uh, gigabit ethernet from realtek wi-fi is bang up to date that's intel wireless ac 9560 that's 8211 ac 2x2 wave 2 and Bluetooth 5. In terms of ports and connectors, we've got nothing particularly exciting or super special, but we've got everything you'd hope to see. So there's one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C, no mention of Thunderbolt. We've got one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A, and we've got two USB 3.1 Gen 1s, what we used to call 3.0 Type A. There's an HDMI 2.0, and there's a mini display port 1.2. Slightly surprised by that display port tends to be 1.4 rather than 1.2. Uh, there's a headphone jack, there's an SD card reader. Uh, Asus doesn't give the spec of the battery, but I've had a look inside. It's a 4210 milliamp hour, 66 watt hour rated uh, unit. That is slightly below par actually. Uh, anything 90 watt hour be about right, mate. Anything just below 100 is what you expect to see these days. There's plenty of room in the chassis after all. The power brick is 180 watts. It doesn't have anything clever going on like a USB port, nothing fancy pantsy, and just a regular cloverleaf cord going to it. Uh, 180 watts for a GTX 1060. That that's what you expect. If it was a GTX 1070, you get a 230 watt typically. If it's a GTX 1080, 330 watt. So that power brick for this laptop makes perfect sense. Uh, the dimensions 361 mil by 262 by 26.1. That's quite thick and chunky. I mean, it's not super chunky or anything, but uh, it's not thin and light, far from it. 2.4 kilos. Uh, so everything pretty much as you'd expect. Nothing earth shaking perfectly decent set of features. One curiosity I note is that the uh, keyboards, uh, uh, you, you, I've seen photos of this same laptop with the WASD uh, keycaps uh, replaced by these uh, clear jobs. For some reason here, QWER. If that's uh, perhaps a way of their engineering people you know, preventing me from stealing it, you know, look, we know it's our laptop, you've got funny keycaps, who knows? Uh, but I've never seen that before. That's uh, actually quite amusing. And then if we open the Aura software for controlling lighting, uh, this is actually going through a rainbow pattern at the moment. Uh, it's really uh, restrained, which in a way is disappointing. Uh, on the other hand, I know from uh, past experience with laptops that have leery keyboards, I tend to turn them on, go, oh, that's all glitzy, then get annoyed or bored or whatever. I can't type on them anyway, and they're all you know, doing that. Uh, change them to white or yellow, pull back the brightness quite significantly just so there's some backlight, and I'm happy. So uh, on the one hand, looking at this going, I'm not impressed. On the other hand, I know if it was giving it all the rainbow stuff, uh, I'd turn it off in five moments. Uh, so... There you go, never happy. Um, so you've got full RGB uh, control, four zones, including the logo on the lid. I like that, I like this logo doing that because it's obviously like a play on the Apple uh, logo. So that's good. I never thought I'd use the phrase going inside the Hero 2, but here we are. Uh, so the uh, back cover is entirely conventional, some ventilation, bit of copper material to reflect heat. There we have a cooling system that is Fairly basic actually. The number of heat pipes is far fewer than we're used to seeing, but then this is GTX 1060. There doesn't appear to be any option of 1070 or 1080, so there's only a certain amount of uh, TDP to handle. Uh, so two uh, heatsink fan units. Uh, you can see the finned heat exchangers there. Uh, obviously, the air is drawn in thus. Uh, dual channel memory, chipset, NVMe, SSD, M.2, there we have the SD card reader, battery is held in place with five screws, two and a half inch SATA bay, honestly that is just about as unexciting as you get. Overall it looks like a solid contender of a laptop, balanced against that there's absolutely nothing about it whatsoever that's striking me as wow must absolutely get this laptop, it looks like a bunch of decent up to date components and you go yep that's a sensible balance, six core processor, 12 threads, decent speed, a uh, sensible TDP, so not desktop process, they have to keep cool somehow. Inside the laptop, it's just as conventional as conventional can be. And then you've got GTX 1060 graphics, which for a full HD panel, yeah, that'll do nicely. Uh, why have the extra, you know, massive power draw and heat if you're not going to do something totally serious with the chip, like drive a 4K panel or even a 1440 panel? Uh, so in one way restrained, in another way very sensible. Now I have some concerns about pricing. 
there's a range of specs. This laptop seems to me to have not quite the full Monty. It's got the middling SSD, but it's got a lot of memory. Uh, pricing starts at 1899.99, we are told here in the UK, so 1900 pounds, which is obviously below 2000. On the other hand, I'll be amazed if this laptop is 1900 pounds, but I don't know what it will cost. If I pick a figure out of the air, and I may be horribly off base here, I'm gonna say 2200, 2300, 2400. And the thing is that there are laptops from MSI and from Gigabyte with the same processor, same graphics, uh, but they're thin and light versions. Uh, so not exactly in the same ballpark, but very similar. Uh, and I mean, look at the bezel on this screen here, for example, it's uh, very slender. So not a thin and light, but kind of in that territory. And if you have all the same hardware, then the pricing obviously needs to be something similar. Uh, and as I say, the battery in this laptop, despite the fact it's reasonably chunky, it's not a big battery. So battery life, pricing, exact spec and performance. Those are going to be the obvious points to look at when we get our hands on an actual production version of this laptop, even though this looks to me very close to production. Interesting, nothing earth shaking but it's good to see Asus has used these components in this combination. Uh, they've joined the merry throng of Gigabyte and MSI. All good news. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button. We'll tell you about more videos as they become available. I'm Neil Wood for KitGuru. This is the Asus ROG Strix Hero 2 GL504GM.